what is up guys as always welcome back to our post narrated battle versus sad which is a person i really enjoy battle mainly because we've actually been well go going in odds really against one another for quite some time it's definitely unfortunate that i didn't get this live recorded because there was a lot of reactions to this game and sad really does pressure me really well in the beginning and this came down to a game of really chances i would say as his team is as follows, Asumarill, Blaziken, Tapibulu, Godwa, um, Conqueror, Kabila, and Conqueror, and Bishop. Which means one thing, like the team here I use has a combo with of course, Billadrum and Scale Shot. And there are now actively 4 months who don't give a shit about that. And that's very 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 problematic. Because it basically means if I wanna like set up with it, I gotta do it versus Blaze again, which definitely you set up in my face and same thing with Conqueror, who definitely breaks me apart. So Bishop might be my like safest mon. Uh, but it's also it's a team that is susceptible to um, lacking defog unless Blaze again or Khan kinda have that in them. So I felt I'm gonna set up stick web even if I know Bisharp is active because there is a very very good chance that if I get webs up they are going to stay on field and that's kind of what I want. <laughs> so I was really hoping for a lead that wasn't a Sumeril as my opponent leads up with Conkeldur which is good. It still carries you know uh, poison jab possibly in contrast with mag punch so it could just break my sash in half. I don't necessarily care for it. I just felt I get the webs up we'll take it from there and um, I was really worried this was a defog variant of uh, Kong because if that is to happen, it probably contradicts whatever I want to do with my slap off. So yeah, it's the easy way, it's the it's the manly way, it's the conqueror way, <laughs> and uh, I get the web. I think my opponent just really, really hoped I wasn't some type of offensive variant as he's gonna go for a Vizard, which is definitely helpful. It means first of all, it's not a defog variant; it's a flame or variant. It also means that I will I be able to have speed so go for a missed explosion and actually preserve my <laughs> my web is gonna be phenomenal um but it also means like I said or the other part of this that Bisharp is now a number one threat if um I don't deal with Bisharp well that means I gotta keep my combo pretty much healthy throughout this match if combo is killed uh, and by the way we, we kill Conkleder with this missed explosion it's wonderful slap off working 100 percent for first time ever <laughs> <laughs> did its part, so we're down 5-5, but yeah, if Kamo is down, I believe Bishop just beats this team with ease, as Sucker Punch pretty much annihilated all of my mods really, so with that in mind, I felt Bishop was a safe switch in, and even if it isn't, I felt that Tavabulu could be the second part, and I could just Volt switch out, so... My opponent is definitely thinking about this. I don't believe he liked the situation. Definitely was probably surprised that Kong actually got knocked out because the Dazzling Gleam definitely were nowhere near of taking it out, nor would a player of B. So Miss Explosion was definitely pushing it over the edge and it really opened up the game for me, at least in the get-go. So, um, yeah. Sad, you really taking a whole lot of time and I've sped up this game with 20%. Come on, man. <laughs> post calm, here we go. Anyway. <laughs> So that's an Intox versus D and Tapu Jungle comes in. I have now my freest Volt Switch of my life. Yes, Sludge Bomb will annihilate this Pokemon, but as long as Slip Up is active, or I mean Bishop is active, I can't do anything about that. I think this Tapu Bulu is definitely bait. So I do check the team one more time. I just don't want to see if there's a ground type I'm missing or anything like that. But no, it seems rather easy to go over a Volt Switch. As my opponent switches out, goes to Bisharp, the blue soldier. And this is huge for me because not only is um, Sticky Web making the game a lot tougher for me with boosting his Defiance, but this Volt Switch, while not killing him, is definitely putting him in fake up range, which means. Well, it means that the Kangaskhan week is doing what a Kangaskhan week is gonna do, and that is make sure the Kangaskhan is working. Fake out that sucker, mother of. No, no, you know exactly what I'm going with. Um, <laughs> I was just really surprised that um, my opponent actually stays in. Um, I I had to check it out afterwards, but Sucker Punch is only plus one priority, which is good. Fake Out is actually plus three. So Fake Out actually goes before Extreme Speed 2, and that is phenomenal. Um, so Fake Out will absolutely ruin this. Now, let's say that somehow it would have been able to survive. I still would have had a combination of Sucker Punch, so it's a that combination would have saved me because I still have Speed Up Bishop. Nope. Because 
Kangaskhan in the base 90 speed Pokemon is actually quite phenomenal. Plus minus one speed, yeah. Kangaskhan is um it's something else. So Lapis Lazuli comes in the Sumeril. Now I dealt with this guy before, not necessarily the set itself, but rather the matchup. I've been seeing this from a set before and I know he's gonna pressure me really well. But the thing is here, unless he has Ice Punch, I do believe there is a matchup here where I just beat him. And uh, consider the Grassy Terrain is active, I think my Lurantis comes in here very freely. Now I was leveling back and forth because it, at the Nightmare scenario, would be whirlpool and this is a Paris song variant mainly because it means that well it's actively destroying me just by being there so i was considering kind of going for a double edge anyway or even worse if it goes for billy drum that's gonna be problematic too just the only positive trait here is that i will always have speed because of um uh, because of the stick web now this looks to be an assault vest variant it's speculative but considering he went for attack instead of belly drum up i felt that was a real possibility and now i have a boosted leaf storm coming his way and there are only so many matchups that survive this and while blaze again is a very like easy switch and i don't necessarily had to i i didn't want to overthink this i felt if I want to break through this team, it's probably going to be just go straight on at it as I have a, you know, two months down in my favors. So I don't have to take the unnecessary risk versus this, at least not yet. I don't need to break through as much and just stay active and preserve my months. So my opponent switches out. I also realize, and as I'm explaining this, that while I whittle down Blaziken here, it is actually my last mon I can use with Gamma with success. And this Leaf Storm does very, very good. Um, and basically, due to the terrain plus my plus two, the next Leaf Storm will absolutely kill him. So I am leveling back and forth here. I was kind of hoping, and I, I'm being completely honest here, I was hoping my opponent was going to Soul Stance up, um, thinking that he was overthinking to break through. And um, he is definitely thinking, but he just decided to make the right call, which is actually to attack me. And um, the reason I say this is because I know there is a scenario here where my opponent could have soul stands up, and my Lorantis would probably break apart his team because of the boosted grassy terrain leaf storm now being a plus four after that. Um, but yeah, he goes ready for Flare Blitz. And like I said, he's definitely thinking that long because it is probably a very hard call to make. Now, a bit of a... Like, I leveled here whether or not I should send in my... <laughs> my combo uh, and just Soul Sands up or build room up. But I was so scared he would be able to carry... Um, <laughs> like Brave Bird or even the combination of Close combo would probably be enough. Plus speed boost would mean that he would outspeed me afterwards. So I felt that, yeah, yeah. And, and the thing is, Kangaskhan's kinda packing the power. Fake out is definitely doing, at least in my respect, the fake out I think should be enough. Um, even if it isn't, I think I'm kinda good. Um, but it felt strange, I definitely say that, because at this point, you know, both Blaziken and Bisharp are primary threats who are now in the mercy of the Kangaskhan. That's never happened to me, ever. And I think that kind of speaks volumes for the mons themselves, that, you know, they're not widely used because there are problematic matchups, but when they get to do what they do best, which is dual priority and actually do a hefty chunk, they become incredible rather fast. And Kangaskhan, in, my, in this week, for me at least, represented most certainly the very best of that. <laughs> and now comes the zoom reel. and well, let's just say that I was really thinking about this because I I was kind of putting myself in a corner by losing Lurantis. It made made that this Pokemon was all the more scarier. But just go for double edge, just getting the damage. I was kind of hoping somehow, if it doesn't have Drum, that this is gonna be a very very high nice hit. Then I'll definitely say it was. Uh, Super Chill with liquidation and. Well, let's just say, this is a zoom real huge power, you know what happens, I am definitely dead. But, <laughs> the positive trade is a Melania, I can pretty much lock myself with the Sludge Bomb and probably call the game. Uh, but I don't want to take the biggest risk versus the um, God of War, so basically I don't want to risk it being Scarfed, if it's Scarfed we will be able to outspeed it, or he will be able to outspeed me, so... I felt like Vol Switch and just get myself into position. And um, so, yeah, I think my opponent really was thinking if he could preserve this. Uh, 
But yeah, my my end game thought here was that I both switch here, I bring in my Omnicrom or my Santa Scorch and um, make sure that no matter what the matchup is from the end game, that Santa Scorch can kind of beat it. Um, Gustavo Bulu can't do anything, I do believe it could learn Stone Edge and that would be probably the only way for him beating me and it was the same thing with God of War, I don't believe God of War can do anything that I wouldn't have to be worried about. Now that said, I actually forgot, or I know we got Trace, I know that, um, but I didn't think, because my plan was to foul latch it and kill it through there, and, and, and that's not gonna happen if God of War comes in and Trace it. And, um, you know, I, I'm not an idiot often, but there are certain times I would say I have questionable, very, very shakable <laughs> environments in my head. And this is definitely, certainly one of those scenarios. Now, I'm not dumb enough to fire a lash anyway, like if Pyros did. Just gonna send that out, right? Right? <laughs> you know, this was... And this was this kind of took a toll on me. I, was, oh, I, I just felt that this was just too much. Leech Light does plenty, which is definitely nice. Uh, Thunderbolt will actually do a very, very fair chunk and, you know, cripple me because, yeah, that's. I don't know. I don't, I don't know what it is, but Pearlization just kind of kind of gets me. That's uh, the yellow magic of absolute madness. So, second Thunderbolt comes in. We I duly stomach that and uh, we're not crippled through. And least life will do plenty, and you know, there we go. It is a definitely a dead God of War. So, the remaining mod we got is Tapabulu, and by matchup alone, you know, I got this in the bag. Um, but it definitely wasn't that easy peasy I was gonna hope for. Um, now, I don't know the set of this Tapabulu, but consider the damage I put versus my mod here. I felt no matter what really happens through here, I should be, you know, in a golden spot, mainly because, well. <laughs> Let's just say it as it is. There are no match up here where Tabulu, you know, beats me. But due to me being paralyzed, um, the minus one will not matter. So I was kind of scared about <laughs> about storage. So I go for Fire Lash. But it turns out not only like he, he'll go for a Mega Horn, which will do well. It will be enough to KO me. I'll, I'll prove you guys that. But I was sure. This was banded, but it's not banded. No, no, of course not. Of course not banded. It is just life orb, and uh, for me that was like way worse because that meant that um, while I could secure the game with just a sludge bomb and call a day, uh, I just I didn't want any taking the risk here. I I might have over predicted, but I really just went for Benedictus just to throw on some iron heads and try to wrap up through there. It might sound strange. But my idea was basically that if I go for a sludge bomb and you know whether or not he kills, it definitely will kill. I just I don't want to throw that risk. Plus, I kind of want to give my opponent some wiggle room because I felt the the, the get or the lead I got from the beginning was just so huge, and uh, <laughs> I felt really I felt bad for my opponent. While Kangaskhan did exactly what I wanted to throughout this week. And by the way, Iron Head flinches 100%. Right, die go nice, and uh, yeah, that's the game. But yeah, like I said, um, it just, I felt so bad, even though Kangaskhan got to do what I wanted to do and it really became, I was gonna say household name, a really good Pokemon overall, you kinda want these games to be longer and not have your hacks being a very, very huge part of it, and while it wasn't, I felt my opponent made some tough calls and it ended up biting him in the ass, because Sad is a really good player, but sometimes he takes those risks to get the wiggle room and sometimes that just comes back at him. So as all the guys who are watching, don't forget to join the Discord channel on Abella Me or Sad for that matter. And as always, have a great one. Take care. Bye.